here we got some door panels for the 1987 Monte Carlo SS we got the upper and the lower we're gonna fiberglass these lower panels here we're gonna put two speakers probably one here one there and we're gonna put some place glass here here's the place glass my boy Rich did it over there Rich everything he did the place glass for us as you can recall in my last video, what I did the rear deck, it was hot runder, but now it's right around the going in the door panels. These are the speakers that we're going with. Six and a half. I think they six and a half. Don't give me the line. Yeah, six and a half. Let me take them out the plastic, then we'll look at them a little bit more. This is what we got here. Nice looking speaker. Sylvester. I went out there and checked everything out before I started uh, my design. Right here I got some tape here because it's actually a bracket that I'm going to have to be able to clear. So. I'm going to have to put the speaker in between it because either I could build this out to clear the magnet or I could cut inside the actual door, cut the metal out so the magnet will be able to clear. I'm going to have it sitting back up inside the door. So as long as I put the speaker in between here, I'd be good. So I think I'm going to have one speaker there, maybe one here. Then I put the place glass here on this side. That way you'll be able to see the place glass without the seat being in the way. If you want to cut it on at night. But that's gonna be what we're going with so far. So we're gonna get some wood. I might use this cord inch. It's thick enough so I can kind of sink it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this quarter inch MDF and cut out my design first. Then I kind of sink it so I'll be able to put my uh, cover on with the uh, mesh grill. Pretty much got it marked out as far as where I want everything. I just use this, I guess you want to call it a gasket, a seal, go up under the speaker. I use it as the speaker just to get my position. That's where I got, I got the speaker about three and a half inches apart. That's my center line. That's the middle. And I'm going to take my circle jig and cut it out. Shout out to Steve Davis. He had blessed me with this Jasper jig years ago. Came in great use. So I'm going to take my uh, router and kind of sink this here. Here's my center. I drilled a hole on both of them from a pivot. And this is going to go on my Jasper tool. It's pretty easy to use. Six and a half. So I go to the six and a half right here. And it's going to meet up. That's where I put this in. Then I put it down in my hole. And it's going to cut me a perfect circle.
yeah, I got my circle cut. I just got to cut the middle out, but I'm not going to cut it out yet until I finish cutting the other two for the other doors. So I can keep my settings on my router. I just used my straight edge and just marked everything out over here. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Here's all four holes cut out. Let's set one of the speakers in. As you can see, it's kind of sunk. That's what I was going for. So now we got that done, we're going to move on to the insert. I got to come up with some kind of design for us to speak a mesh grill. But we're going to separate the two from the other two because one go in one door panel and the other go in the other. But we're going to come up with some kind of design right now. I somewhat came up with a design for my speaker mesh, my insert. I'm going to have all four of them basically like this here. I might turn them around a different angle, but they're going to be like this. So I'm going to cut this out, then I'm going to trace it out on a piece of cardboard. And then I just use that as my guide for us cutting it out on the wood. This what I got so far. Like I said, I cut everything out in cardboard. I use it as a template, but I centered everything with my speaker rings, as you can see. That's the design I'm going with. Now, what I do, I take my jigsaw and cut out around where my uh, red sharpen marks at. Okay, I got my holes cut out. You want to make sure you say these here what you cut out because you're going to use these to press the grills in place. Now I take my router and put a round over on all four of these. Here's the round over. Kind of went too far but it's not going to matter. I'm just using these to press the grill on. So now I just separate all my four pieces and I get ready to press the grills in place. All four pieces separated. Now we can go ahead and press them in place. Speaker mesh cut the size somewhat a little bit bigger than what I need. These are pressed in place. You can do it a free ways. If you got a press, that's going to be the easiest way. Or you could get you some clamps and sandwich it together. And press it in place or you can get or you can use a hammer put like a piece of wood scrap piece of wood at the bottom and put your pieces and get you a hammer with well, another piece of scrap wood and get your hammer just beat it but you got to make sure this piece here stay in place until you get it started just hit it on each side well all four sides until you get it down in place All four of them pressed in place. Now I take my chamfer bit and I put an edge along the inside. Here's the edge. Now I put a rabbiting edge on the inside so my grill will sit down flush. There's my rabbiting edge. I took my sharpen, put my mesh grill down in there, and traced out where I needed to drop down at inside the edge. Now I cut that out. There's the speaker mesh. Now we'll clean up a little bit. I done made a mess out here. Then we'll start uh, setting our speaker rings in place. We'll have to trim it up just to get it how we want it. Once we do that, we'll do the same with the insert. Here's the following morning. 
Last night I was trying to figure out how I was going to finish up everything. And I was thinking about putting another speaker mesh here. Just a small one. Just to connect these two. And that's what I usually do at night. I think about the easiest way and another way of doing things. And I came up with that. So let me come up with some kind of design. I think I might put like an oval or something here. But I'll come up with something. Give me a second. That's what I came up with. It's gonna sit right in the middle. Okay, let me cut this out and then I'll transfer it over to wood. But I'm not gonna show you the process. I'm just gonna finish it up like I did this here. Then I'll cut it back on. Okay, now we got that done. We can get back on track now. Okay, I got my speaker rings platform. Now you can see it's pretty much too big for it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim out some of this bottom just so the bottom of the speaker ring sits somewhere close to the bottom. As you can remember, I got to keep this speaker here inside of this. Just be able to clear when I cut inside the door itself out. Then I'll probably trim some of this off at the top and circle this off on each side. See, I got the base trimmed out, but I'm going to have to do some more trimming once I finish up. I also got the insert trim. You want to make sure you got enough room when you remove the insert that you can access the speakers. You don't want it too small, so... I had to work with that. So now I'm going to take some three quarter of an inch MDF and I'm going to make a, I'm going to make this raised up here. So I'm going to trace this out. I got my MDF right here. I'm going to trace this out here. So I have a drop down. So this would be a drop down. Now I take my jigsaw and cut this out. I got both pieces here cut out. Just gonna sit down inside of it. Now I'm gonna put a round over on the inside of both pieces. There's my round over. Let me put the piece in and show you how it looks. Now I take my speaker ring platform and I center this up, which I kind of cut it too small. You can see I got a gap there, but I put some body filler there. I'll tell you that once I center it up, it's gonna be centered. That look like it's centered there. See that gap? Also got a gap down there. But I'll take some body filler and fill that up. But I'm going to glue these pieces together. Then I'll cut you back on. While those pieces are drying, we'll jump over here on this plate of glass. We already know it's going right here. Let me take it out the wrap first, then we'll go from there. This is what I got. I transfer this over. Well, I cut this inside out, then transfer it over to this MDF and cut it out on the MDF. Now I just cut this out. I started over there, but I just decided to use this whole piece 
just to be on the safe side because I can always trim out what I don't need instead of not having enough. But I'm going to cut this part here out with the jigsaw. It's going to sit on top of this place of glass like this. Now I take my bit and do the same thing. I'm going to put an edge on this like I did the, uh, the insert. But I got to make another one. Same exact uh, measurements. There you have it. Now I'm going to draw this same shape onto this here. It's going to be a little bit smaller, but I'm going to try to mimic it. Probably this big here. Come back around. This is what I'm going with. Somewhat the same shape. Let me cut this out with the jigsaw. Then we'll move on to the next step. Got both of them cut out. Now we're gonna do the same thing what we did with the speaker inserts. We're gonna have a drop down. But this is the wood that I actually cut from the speaker insert. I'm just gonna reuse it. I filled up the hole with body filler. So we're gonna have to trace this out the same way. Now I put my round over on my three quarter of inch MDF. There's the round over. Now I take my wood glue and glue these pieces here together. It's not gonna be like the the speaker insert where I can remove it. This here ain't gonna be removable. So I'm gonna glue this together. Then I'm gonna go back with some body filler and feel that crack. This after I put the body filler on it, I sanded it down some. Then I came back with some one part glaze and put the, the feather edge it on out. And the back side, I just hit it with the DA. Which didn't really have to be smooth, but I went on and did it. Now I'm gonna box this in. The LED. Well, not the LED, but the place glass for the LED. I'm going to line it up. And then I'm going to take, I had to cut some strips off. I'm going to box it in. Now I take my wood glue. Glue everything together. Okay. I got everything together now. You can see the box. The back side. I also made a cover to go over. And here's the speaker rings put together. Now we're going to take all this over here and get ready to uh, cut the extra pound out position it in place. I'm going to probably take it up to here where the armor is at. So I'll be cutting out most of this here. Cut this with the jigsaw. I'm just shaping it up like I did right here. I got it the same contour as the original panel. And I just put a curve up here. Also right here. On this side I didn't worry about it because it's going to be hid up under here. I'm finished cutting everything out for us the door panel itself on both of them. That's the thing about doing door panels. You gotta make at least two, sometimes four. Just time consuming. But here goes the pieces. I had to do some trimming 
on them also. See, I trimmed this around the edges. Before I glue everything down, I'm going to take it out to my router and put a cove around the edge. So I have a drop down when I staple the fleece on. It'll be kind of sunk. And when I build it up, I build it up to the actual wood. I'm going to put a cove around this edge also. I ain't got to worry about this top part. Well, I'm going to put one on this top part also. So I can staple the fleece onto the door panel at the top too. got that taken care of. Now I get ready to cut me some legs out. This top part pretty much where I need it to be because I cut it out. I pretty much measured it then. But this bottom part, I'm going to put some legs on it just to hold it in place. And I'm going to be using these pieces I cut out. The MDF. Here go my legs here. Huh? I got these labeled with a B for us the bottom. I consider this the bottom part and this the top. These top. On the top, I'm going to have to stack three together to get the height. But on these here, I'm just standing them straight up like this here. You see, I got all my legs glued on now. Now I'm ready to set it in place. So, yeah. I'm going to be using hot glue to sit everything in place. And you want to make sure you be using a flat surface. See, I can't use this stand because you can see it's like a bow. And you don't want no bow. You want it to be flat because once you put it on the doors, if it's bowed out, it's going to stay like that once you fiberglass it. So you want to make sure it's on a flat surface. You can really do it on the ground if you want to. Just make sure it's flat. Here's everything glued in place. I use hot glue on everything except this top section here. I had flipped it over and put some fiberglass fill on it. Let me flip it over and show it to you. You can see. Now it's time to put the fleece on. It's going to start taking form now. I'm not going to use no spray. I'm just going to stretch it and put some staples in it. And these are the staples I'll be using. Cord inch. Since it's not no big area, that's why I'm just going to stretch it and staple it. I'm going to staple it along that way with that cold. Also, in that little crease there. And up here, I'm going to staple in that crease. I'm not going to worry about this part here. None of that. This is the fleece I'll be using. You can get it from Walmart in the fabric department. I'm just going to cut it to size and start putting it on.
I said I wasn't going to spray no glue on it, but I decided to because I was going to cut it off right here with that crease at. But once I start looking at it, I think it will look better if I just bring the fleece on down and overlap it on the back side. So I'm going to put some spray adhesive here so I ain't got to worry about stapling that. I like to do one side at a time. I start halfway. And you can see I put some masking tape here, which I didn't really need to, but it'll help me out when I start sanding. I ain't got to worry about getting that glue up inside of the. But I like to throw it halfway. Then I start spraying. I spray the fleece. I also spray the panel. to the end, throw it in the middle, stretch it out. I'll put some more over here, but it's pretty simple. Once I finish doing the fleece, I'm going to go back and staple any areas that I feel like that'll come up. fiberglass is inside these staple the staple lines like this here I don't got a fiberglass that because it's wood and here's the resin I'm gonna be using it's the fiberglass resin by Bundo I got a cup chip brush and the harder I gotta get a stir stick and I'm just gonna be brushing it on then I'm gonna let it sit sit out here overnight then I come back and sand it down and I got laid in a way but I just want to put the resin on before I finish up Here's the following morning. 
I had came back last night and put another coat of resin on it, so it's pretty thick. So I'm gonna take the DA with Ada grit and knock this down and somewhat get it smooth before I start laying the five glass mat on it. This is what it's gonna look like after the 80 grit on the DA. I'm not trying to get it too smooth, I'm just trying to knock it down so the matter lay a lot flatter. Let me take it on the inside and show you what I got going on. I'm cutting my mat out now. Using this bundle five glass mat. I don't finish this one here. I'm going to bring the other down inside and cut it out so I have all both of them cut out before I start laying the mat. I got my fiberglass resin. Mix it the same way as I did when I put the resin on on top of the uh, fleece itself. But I'm just brushing this on. Once I get it coated, I take my fiberglass mat and lay it in place. Start uh, dabbing it, soak the mat. There's all kind of ways you can do it. I know you can get a roller, or you can just soak the mat itself, then lay it on. But I like doing it this way here. It's like a puzzle. Just keep doing it until you get all your pieces laid. Finishing up with the mat, I take it outside, put it up under the sun, and let it dry a lot faster like that. This is what it looked like once everything dry. Now I take the deal again with some eighty grit. And I'll knock all this down, get it smooth. Okay, this is what we're looking like. At this time, I'm going to go back and fill all my deeper imperfections, such as where these staples at. I'm going to put some body filler in those areas. Also up here, I might as well just wipe this whole spot here. And maybe here. It's a lot of little areas here with the staples. We'll let this here dry. Then we'll sand it down. Move on to the next step. Now I remove my fleece over my openings here. There you go, got the openings cut out. Now I'm gonna take my cut off wheel here and finish cutting this out here. You 
You see, I got everything cut out now. What we about to do now is brush the rondo on. I haven't used rondo in my videos lately. I think this would be a good time to use it since it's pretty much smooth. I just got to get it smoother than what it is. The rondo is a brushable body filler. If you want to know how to mix it up, I have it down in the description. It'll also be popping up now. So, I'm going to mask this area here off so I won't get no rondo on the extra plastic that I had in fiberglass. So let me mix that up and we'll get started brushing it on. Start sanding it. And when I'm be used, I'm gonna be using 80 grit on a DA again. I'm just knocking it down. I'm not trying to get it too flat. I'm gonna do that by hand once I knock it down with the DA. I'm just making it light on me using the uh, power tools first. Sand it with the 80 grit on the DA. Now I take some fiberglass filler and make this transition from the fiberglass that I did and the extra panel a lot smoother. I just wipe some, take my finger, and just feather edge it onto the existing panel. I'll be using this Dura glass fiberglass filler by USC after I had sanded down my edge here that I put the uh, fiberglass filler at I came back with some regular body filler just to feather edge it on out and I seen some more imperfections that I just feel Just waiting on it to dry up, then I sand this down. Then I think we'll be ready for some primer. Also, I gotta cut this section here out from the back side. I'm gonna cut it out here. Now I can access this back side to install my plexiglass. I'm just finishing up on the scuffing. I got a maroon scotch spray. I'm scuffing up the plastic. You want to make sure you sand that real good because paint don't want to stick to plastic as easy to do metal and wood. But I'm going to use an adhesion promoter on it. I still want to sand it anyway. But I got everything sanded, I think. Ready for my first round of primer. I'm going to prime this back side also. With the LED going, I'll probably do that first. Here's all my pieces uh, staged up, ready to be primed. You can see I sprayed some spray paint on the back side because wood, it take a while for it to seal up. And I just didn't want to waste no primer trying to seal it up, so I sprayed some spray paint on it. It'll help seal it up a lot faster. Put some 2K high bill prime on it. If 
before I spray this top side, I'm going to spray some adhesion promoter by Sam on this plastic. Here's the high build primer. I can see my imperfections a lot better now. But I got a feel and sand down. I feel these imperfections here with a uh, one part glazing putty. Spots white with glaze and putter, one point glaze and putter. Now I spray my guide coat on there. I'm gonna be using flat black spray paint. Okay, since I got the guide coat and the uh, one point glazing put on here, I might as well install my neo magnets just to hold my insert on, which will go on like this here. So I'm gonna put a magnet. I'm gonna put four on, one on each corner, and I just gotta find the correct drill bit. I'm gonna put four on here, also four on the uh, door panel itself. This is how I did my magnets here. First I drilled a hole on my insert. Then I took a brush with some paint and walked around my circle. Then I took my insert and pressed it down where it need to be. And it left me a mark where I need to drill out here. So then I drilled that out. Here I go my two magnets. One going here and one going in my insert. And they're going to sit down on top of it like that. But I'm not going to put the magnets in until I finish painting. And on the drill bit, I put a piece of tape where I need to stop for is how deep I need to go. There's my magnets. Yours may be different, but this how I done it. Since the holes drilled, we'll start blocking it now. I got a flat block and a rounded block. I'm going to use this rounder block on areas like this here, so I'm going to square it off. And I could use 180, but I'm going to use 80 since I'm going to prime it again. So the primer is going to cover up them 80 scratches. And plus it's not going a shine and finish. It's going to be textured anyway. So I shouldn't have no problems. I'm just trying to remove the guide coat. That's about it. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to show me all my... Low areas, my imperfections. Let me remove some more so I can show you. It's pretty flat because you don't see no guide coat right here, but you still see some here and here. Those are low areas, but it's going to come down once I continue blocking it. Let's inspect what we got so far. This around here pretty smooth. Which I can bring this down some more. I got plenty of prime on it. 
But let me show you this area here. This area here is lower than all of it because it's a big dark area of guide coat. Then right here, it's a high area where I'm hitting down to the body filler. But it still can come down some more. I should be able to block that out. Also, these areas here. These are the areas I've done with the round the block. I'm going to do this top section here with the flat block. Everything is flat. And when I get to the edges, I'm going to do it by hand. I'm just going to take some sandpaper and sand it by hand so I won't square it off. All my flat air is taken care of now that I did with the flat block. So I've done up in here, also up here. Only thing left is doing around my edges by hand. I don't got to worry about blocking this because it was already flat. I'm just going to do it by hand. Just finished up with all the sanding. I think I'm not going to sand no more after this here. Once I prime it, I'm going straight to the color and the sila. I know I said that when I did the uh, red deck, but I had some runs. And I had went on a wet sander, but I'm going straight to the silver color after this. Don't have no problems. I probably put one coat of um, high bill prime on this here. Here's the primer. I think I put, I know it was two coats of primer. Some areas it was three. Now it's time to put my texture. I'll be using this truck bed liner for my texture. It's clear. You can use black if you want to. But I've been using clear lately. It's been working out well for me. I'm just going to mix it on. Here's the texture. It's dry to the touch now, but I was trying to let it dry a little bit longer because I got to flip it over. I'm going to spray this back side. Also, these pieces here, I'm going to spray the back side on. I'm going to be spraying a sealer first. It's an orange sealer. I got it right here. It's by Eurocam. It come close to the color that I'm going to use. I'm going to use Inferno Orange by Chevy. It's the interior color of a 2007 Camara. And I'm using this Scylla just so I won't use as many coats of uh, the extra color.
Here's the silla. Now I spray my color, my extra color. It's the Sims 5953 Inferno Orange. It's ready to mix, ready to be sprayed. I don't have to reduce it. I'm going to put two coats on it because I put two coats on the red deck. So I want everything to match. Early the next morning. This is the following day. I had let it side here overnight. Sort of dry before I started touching all on it. I gotta put everything back together now, such as the speakers, the place of glass, speaker mesh, the neo magnets, probably a few more other things, but you can tell the difference from the color now. I didn't spray the actual color on this piece here because it's going to be on the back side you ain't going to be able to see it but this is the cellar and that's the original color and it's like a little darker than the cellar but once I get everything back together I'll cut you back on and give you a look at it I all my LEDs these LEDs here got some two-sided tape on, but I put some hot glue on it just to be on the safe side also. Now I fish my wires out through this hole I had just drilled. Put the cover on, screw the cover on. Then I should be good to go. Finishing up, I got the cover on now. I'm not gonna worry about painting that. Southern Chevy TV can if you want to. But you can see this time I had painted the inside of this orange a brighter color last time I painted it black which I'm gonna go back and repaint it because the black you really couldn't see the brighter rounder if the lights went on but since it's being orange you can see it better now and also somebody left a comment in the comment section too said I should have painted it a, a brighter color which you know that was a good idea but let me finish up I what we got here at the speaker inserts I haven't put these speakers in here because I wanted to show you how it look those the neo magnets here's the plexiglass I think by me putting that uh that back piece orange I think it look a lot better than it being black that was a good idea there and shout out to Rich Everything. He did his thing on this design here. I'm going to have him do me some when I do my box Chevy. Y'all go show him some love over there. Rich Everything. Let me cut this one on. Show it to you. Here is the speakers. I haven't screwed them in yet. I gotta go get some screws. They ain't come with no screws. And let me put the insert on.
never stop.